Yeah, might have to change that uh, that number, vlog number later. I don't know if this is 290 or not. <laughs> I'll have to check it. Anyway, we're live, pal. So, hey guys, Andy here, and I'm just kind of out and about today. Um, just got done eating some food, and I figured, you know, I was going to go home and actually, like, record a, a proper, you know, update video like I normally do in my room. But you know what? It's such a nice day out, and you know, with winter coming up soon, well, soon-ish, I figure, you know, take advantage of the nice days while you can, and just uh, record where there's, uh, there's good wireless, and uh, McDonald's, you know, for better or worse, one of the better wireless places out here. And I can record, like, in my car, <laughs> pretty far away, so I don't have to worry about upsetting customers or anything like, oh. Oops, dude. There we go. Upsetting customers or anything like that. So anyway, hey guys, Andy here, and welcome to my October 2018 update video for, you guessed it, October 2018. Woo. So yeah, as always with these updated videos, I'm going to go over some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff. So let's just jump right into it. And again, this is live, so there might be mistakes and stuff, and I might go on little rambly bits, so bear with me. Um, but, you know, like I said, I figure since it's such a nice day out, I'd, uh, just sit here and record, uh, take advantage of the nice days while we have them, because winter's coming sooner than you might think. So, in any event, uh, let's go over some youtube -y stuff, give you guys some updates there. So, um, as you guys know from the previous updates, um, my editing channel got demonetized a couple weeks ago. And it was, according to YouTube, it was due to uh, duplicate content. And I had a bunch of different theories about uh, what that could mean. If there was any specific videos. I tried asking YouTube for a bit more specific info. If there was, like, any particular videos that, you know, flagged the system to where they're like, you know, what the hell's going on? And I had a couple theories. Uh, one of them was the Starbomb videos. Um, for those who don't know, I uh, put together the uh, South by Southwest 2016 live stream that they did. Uh, the original stream's audio was pretty shitty. So I just uh, took the original stream's audio and used it as an editing project for uh, Adobe Audition. And I just went in there and experimented with uh, like compression, EQ, all that kind of stuff just to make it sound a lot better and uh, it did <laughs> it sounds way better than the original stream um, and it was actually one of my most popular videos and it would always get a very consistent amount of traffic um, not just on the full concert the full concert was my most popular video uh, but I also broke it up into its individual songs so if you guys just wanted to listen to a particular song you could those did okay but it was the main full concert that got the most amount of views, <laughs> bar none. But, you know, it's always nice to give people options. So I figured, you know, that could have been the case as far as the whole duplicate content thing. So I ended up, uh, they were originally unlisted because when I went to go uh, fix up my editing channel to be what it is now, you know, focused on editing tutorials and other aspects of the creative industry, um, I had to take down a lot of videos, but I just made them unlisted, so if you still had the link or had had them in like a playlist or something like that, you could still watch them, and I figured that'd be okay, but uh, I guess it wasn't for YouTube, so I ended up just straight up deleting them. Um, I apologize for having to do that, but kind of is what it is, you know, so, you know, maybe one day I'll re-upload them somewhere else, but uh, won't be on that channel, that's for sure. Um, but in any event, uh, that was one of the possible suspects. Another one would have been the uh, the Roger Swan Remastered series, where I went and this was actually before the uh, the whole Starbomb thing. Um, I went and remastered a lot of, well, not a lot of, all of the uh, the Tokyo Swan and the Wate Swan series of videos um, as a tribute to uh, the late great Roger Swan. Um, it was originally to celebrate his. Um, his 10 years of first arriving to Japan, as well as 
um, something to kind of build interest into the, uh, the study abroad program at Western Michigan. Um, at the time they were starting up um, doing some ad campaigns and stuff and I wanted to um, put the series out to kind of, you know, hopefully give people some interest in the program as well as in Roger's um, scholarship program, scholarship fund that was started um, shortly after he passed away in 2010. Um, so it was designed to gain, to garner interest in that as well. Um, but the videos were never monetized and, you know, strictly, you know, in tribute to Roger and to bring awareness to the scholarship and study abroad opportunities over at Western Michigan University where I was going at at the time. And it was also, you know, in a, in a, it's kind of a side thing. It was meant to kind of give me some practice editing with Premiere because I just switched over to, from Sony Vegas and I need something to kind of help me practice how Premiere works versus Vegas. Um, but in any event, those episodes were very well received by Roger's audience, friends, family, all that sort of thing. And originally I wanted them uploaded on his, his own channel, but you know, talking with uh, family and friends and stuff, they recommended that I just you know, upload them to my own channel and just leave Rogers as a memorial to uh, to the videos that he put out. So, um, you know, <laughs> had to do what I had to do. So, um, you know, I also deleted those as well. Um, just kind of is what it is again. But you know, if you're hankering for some uh, some Roger Swan, you know, his videos are still up on his original YouTube channel, so you can still check them out there. Uh, which is what I would highly recommend because even though some of the videos even are like over a decade old at this point but it's just his his spirit and just his you know his love for life uh, just his energy and vibe and stuff is just really really infectious and I think it's one of the the main points that I really liked about about Roger and that's why even even today in 2018 it still sticks with me you know there's not a lot of not a lot of YouTubers, especially nowadays, that are like that, you know? And it was just in a different time on YouTube. But, you know, <laughs> I could wax nostalgic about that all day. Uh, it's kind of hot in here, actually. But in any event, um, so I ended up getting rid of those videos, straight up deleting them. And uh, <clears throat> another possible one uh, could have been just the fact that I was moving all of my... Uh, vlogs and other videos onto this channel so that's what I think is probably the most likely thing that happened was uh, you know all the vlogs and everything else somehow got flagged by the system because it showed that oh you know there, there's vlogs that are unlisted on this channel and this channel but they're on this other channel you know whatever you know but it's kind of funny because I looked it up today actually because I was a little curious um, and I noticed that there were some people who ended up like re-uploading my own shit <laughs> and uh, it's just a straight like rip from my channel um, some of them added a lot of like spam content you know like you know V-Bucks or whatever the fuck the Fortnite shit is about coupons and whatever else so I was like oh okay so these guys can do it but I, the original creator of those videos, gets penalized for that. Okay, roger that. And keep in mind, those videos, the duplicate videos that I didn't authorize to be, you know, uploaded up there. Um, you know, keep in mind, those were, uh, those have been up for some of them even years. Um, so that's kind of kind of disconcerting, you know. I just had to do a little little googling to find all that shit. So I was a little little pissed off about that. Um, but we'll kind of deal with that later. Uh, but in any event, um, as far as the whole demonetization thing, um, right now I'm just working to build up this channel in particular, uh, getting all the vlog, all the old videos and stuff moved over here. And get them all scheduled out and then uh, 
also making new videos for this channel as well. Uh, it's not just going to be old content. Um, so that's what I'm focusing most on now. And then I've also been kind of cycling between the other stuff as well, you know, like with the whole Andy Talks Navy thing, just doing little bits here and there, you know. And, uh, oof, man, it is freaking hot out today. Let me just switch hands here. Oof, this phone's, phone's burning my right now, but anyway, um, where is that? Oh, yeah. Um, so I've been focusing mo <clears throat> mostly on just getting this channel up and running and, uh, you know, getting all the vlogs and stuff scheduled out, thumbnails, tags, title, all that shit. Get that all taken care of. And then uh, once that's done, then I can start, you know, making some more uh, newer videos as well. Uh, not just for this channel, but also for... Uh, sorry about the noise, but anyway, also for uh, my editing channel as well, because I've kind of fallen off the wagon as far as uploading stuff for that channel goes, and the whole demonetization thing certainly didn't help my motivation in uh, making stuff for that channel. But uh, I figured, you know what, even if I'm not making anything from that channel currently, um, I think it would be best to at least have something up there to show, like, you know, show if anything that the channel's still alive, you know, so um, once I get a little bit of time, then I'm going to start uh, doing some batch recording for uh, for some tutorials and stuff, because I, I do have ideas written down for uh, tutorials, and uh, just got to just gotta get on it, basically, so uh, that's going to be, that's what's going to be going on with that, and as far as the whole Andy Talks Navy channel, um, I don't have any plans to make it like a super consistent thing. It's just going to be kind of an every once in a while sort of thing. Um, just as I see videos that I think are kind of interesting to uh, to react to. And uh, if there's any particular topics or something that I feel like I can contribute as a U.S. Navy veteran, um, be happy to, uh, to do what I can, you know. Um, but again, it's, you know, basically a secondary channel, so, you know. <laughs> stuff kind of comes when it comes um, and for this channel this is my personal channel also my archive channel as well so you know we're gonna have consistent uploads of the old content so for people who weren't around uh, when my old stuff came out they have another chance to uh, to watch it and uh, it also gives me um, a little bit of a boost in the algorithm because it shows like oh he uploads daily you know so um, there is a method to the madness um, so it does give you guys something to watch in between me making stuff for not only this channel but also my other channels as well and then like I said for the edited by the Andy Sun channel uh, definitely expect some tutorials coming up soon um, I've just been really busy as of late which we'll get into in the personal section but Schedule is starting to clear up a little bit, so I think we're gonna start putting out some uh, some tutorials soon. So, in any event, now that we've gone over the uh, the YouTube -y stuff, let's get on to some personal life stuff. Let me switch hands here. <laughs> Still hasn't cooled off yet. But in any event, like I said, um, been very busy these uh, past couple weeks. Which you know, if you've been following this channel for a while, it's nothing new, really. Um, but as it relates to recent busyness, uh, it's mostly involved with, uh, with my brother because um, he's stationed out in North Carolina, uh, which is where uh, Hurricane Florence struck. Well, I guess it was Tropical Storm Florence by the time it got there, but still it's enough <laughs> to wreck some shit. And so uh, his wife ended up dropping off um, their dog to uh, stay with us for a couple weeks while they got that situation under control and you know love her to bits wonderful dog but uh, you know while she was interacting with the other dog <laughs> at the house they'd often get into trouble and dig holes and bark and you know it's just kind of a stressful thing to deal with you know as I'm you know applying for new jobs and as I'm working on you know video projects and things like that it's kind of hard to for me to do that while still paying attention to what the dogs are doing making sure they don't rip stuff up or you know dig holes or bark or 
whatever, play a little too loud and whatnot. So that was kind of stressful on me. But um, yesterday they came by and uh, picked up their dog and now they're back in North Carolina. So I um, won't have to worry about that. <laughs> but it was kind of nice having, having her around, you know. She was a really chill dog. And like I said, by themselves, they're pretty good dogs. You know, you don't have to really mess with them too much. But together, they just like to play and they're very loud and, you know, it's something I gotta keep track of and since I don't have a laptop to edit stuff I couldn't just like sit in the living room and watch them you know because when I was actually out in the living room watching them they're fine didn't do nothing it was always when I went into my bedroom to start editing stuff that you know I'd hear them rustling around or you know what's this licky spot over here what's wrong with this blanket and all this other stuff so, so that's when things started to get a little bit ooh, sun flare Shit. <laughs> that's when things start to get a little sun flare. No, but that's when things started getting stressful. Um, but that's all. It's all over with now. Um, so I should be able to uh, start making uh, videos, like I said, in the YouTube update. Um, but more importantly, stress levels are going down because it was getting a little, little hectic n there near the end. Um, but yeah, stress levels are definitely going down with that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm also applying for new jobs. Um, mostly, you know, as a pace, as well as to make money to save up for, uh, for going back to Japan. So, um, applied to a bunch of different places around town. Not going to name names because I don't know who's watching. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, applied to a lot of places here in town. Um, I go in for an interview today, actually at some place that I will not name but uh, yeah pretty exciting stuff um, and uh, like I said looking to uh, save up some money get back out to Japan um, as I explained in previous update video um, my main reasons for wanting to go back to Japan you know are <laughs> trying to get a new position <coughs> but anyway uh, reasons are that I want to network more because I feel like with doing freelance stuff which I really love and want to do more of I feel like I've kind of hit kind of a limit to what I'm doing right now because um, I feel like you know I'm trying to trying to get more clients and things like that and you know my network especially locally locally is pretty much non-existent you know all of my main network content you know contacts as far as doing videos and stuff are out in Tokyo or thereabouts so I figure why not just go where they're at and you know be able to do more for them as opposed to just being here in America putting together their footage you know I want to get out there and you know shoot video with them as well you know just get different uh, camera angles for b-roll and if anything just be an extra set of hands to help them out with uh, making their videos so I think that's really going to be going to be helpful and uh, you know can't wait for that and you know I also want to uh, just go back to school out in Japan you know because uh, there's two places that I'm looking at right now uh, there's Lakeland University and there's Temple and uh, the main advantage that Lakeland has over Temple is that they have a better acceptance rate and since I have pretty low grades right now uh, as it stands from the last time I was in college um, they would be more likely to accept me versus Temple where I'd have to probably build up my GPA a little bit before considering going there uh, but one of the disadvantages is that uh, Lakeland is a two-year university you got to Oh, never mind. I thought I got a notification. Anyway, Lakeland's a two-year university versus Temple, which is a four-year university, so I can get my bachelor's degree from Temple versus Lakeland, where you can only get uh, an associate's degree. But you can get, like, a transfer degree, so that way if you transfer to a four-year university, then, um, you know, you won't have to take a lot of the bullshit courses. You just take the stuff that's in your major and carry on smartly from there pretty nice um, but you know another disadvantage 
that Lakeland has is that um, there are upfront costs to going into the dorms versus Temple, which has um, its own dorm system where, you know, if you're, especially for me being a veteran, getting paid through the GI Bill, you know, it, it takes a minute for the GI Bill to, uh, to kick in. You know, at best it would be a month, at worst it could be longer, and I've heard recently of some payment hang-ups going on as far as GI Bill goes. So I was getting a little a little worried about that. Um, and especially being out in Japan where it's harder to make money in some aspects, you know, because you're limited in your the amount of time that you, uh, you can work under a student visa. I think it's only 25 to 28 hours a week that you can work. Um, but the wages are obviously way better than in the States. It's just that, you know, you have to be a bit more careful in picking your jobs and stuff like that. Um, but it is a lot easier to pick up work and there's many more career opportunities out there versus, you know, here in Ohio or even back in Kalamazoo, you know. So that's nice. And uh, anyway, uh, some advantages of going to Temple. Um, the BAH is way higher. Uh, last I checked, times recording, BAH for uh, fucking uh, Lakeland, Jesus. <laughs> This is why I edit my vlogs. But BH for uh, for Lakeland is about 1200 a month, which is still pretty good and is definitely doable in Tokyo, which is pretty shocking to say, but it is doable if you budget correctly. Um, but over at Temple, it's like close to $2,000 a month. So that's a pretty considerable difference. And you're living in the same area too, so it's not like you know, one's in Tokyo and the other's in Osaka or Yokohama or something like that. You know, you're living in the same area, so it don't really make much of a difference, you know. And plus, if uh, I really wanted to, um, I could just, you know, there's a lot more options as far as cheap housing in Tokyo versus, you know, in the States. And uh, that's really going to help me out. Obviously, the apartment's not going to be as spacious as my previous apartment in Japan was, <laughs> not even close. Um, but the uh, the rent can be reasonable depending on where you're at. If you don't mind a commute, then you can live in a pretty pretty okay sized apartment for not a whole lot of money. Um, again, it might be a lot might mean a longer commute, or you might not be around. Uh, you know certain places like convenience store or something like that but then again it's Japan so <laughs> you know you can't walk more than two feet without hitting a kombini or something like that so again it all depends on location and stuff relative to train stations and everything else but uh, you know it is it is definitely doable to do on a student visa and plus um, you know there's also the option of just like you know rooming with people you know, um, <clears throat> I've been finding some uh, pretty decently sized uh, apartments or even like townhouses that are still reasonably priced for me just by myself. But if I were to get roommates, that would drive the price down even more, which means that I could save up more money. So in case, say, the GI Bill, you know, takes a little bit longer to kick in. I still have money in savings to where I'm not like freaking out about where I'm going to eat that night or something like that. Um, or you know, what if I have to go back to the states for whatever reason? Um, you know, it's always good to have that uh, that plane ticket money should something happen. Um, and another good thing about living in Japan is you don't have to have a car. You know, uh, well in Tokyo anyway. I should preface that it's you don't have to have a car like. If you're in a big city, um, if you're out in the Yanaka or something like that, then yeah, you know, having a car is definitely essential, I think. Uh, but if you're in one of the big cities, you really don't need it, <laughs> to be honest. It'd be nice to have, but, you know, the cost of having one and all that has to deal with that is just, to me, as a single dude, it's not really worth it. You know, I mean, if I had a family or something like that and I didn't want to fuss with them getting on the train or something like that then fine but uh you know it's just a single dude i really don't need a vehicle out in japan 
you know, but should I need one, I, I think, you know, maybe a scooter or like a K, K cycle or something like that um, would be more than enough, you know, if I wanted something motorized. But uh, I was just thinking about um, just getting a bicycle while I was out there so I can, you know, you know, depending on where I'm at, you know, living wise, I could possibly bike back and forth to college or at least, you know, bike back and forth towards other locations I go to frequently, like the store, or convenience, something like that. It's just a way for me to, to get around without having to rely on the trains all the time. And, you know, when I was out in Yokosuka, you know, I lived fairly close to base. So by bike, it was actually pretty fast and I ended up getting there faster by bike versus by train anyway because I could use the bike on base versus the train which just gets me from station to station and I still have to walk to the station and I still have to walk from the station to base to my ship and you know it's just it's more time so with the bike is a lot faster um, and it saved me like a ton of money really like even just going back and forth to base you know um, on the train was like uh, roughly about three bucks round trip every day that I was working like during the week so instead of spending that just getting back and forth to work you know I ended up just spending it on a bike and within like a month or so I ended up recouping the cost of the bike <laughs> so that's pretty nice um, but also you know the main reason that I do want to go back out to Japan is that just quite quite frankly I miss it you know <laughs> I've been back in the States for over three years now, and a lot of the reverse culture shock has, has since faded, and you know, I've gotten used to civilian life again and all that stuff. But, um, you know, I do, do miss, in some cases, the simplicity of Japan. I know it's complicated in other parts, but, you know, I just miss how things worked out there. You know, the transportation system, you know, I didn't need to have a car. I didn't worry about what if my car breaks down or I get in an accident or if somebody steals my car, breaks in my car, or something happens to this car, <laughs> I'm fucked. Basically, being out here in the States, um, especially where I'm at, you know, maybe if I was in New York, it wouldn't be so bad, but uh, still, um, being in the States, you pretty much have to have a car in order to get around anywhere. Um, don't get me wrong, I mean, car is nice. Get your own little space to do whatever the fuck you want within legal reason um you just listen to your own tunes almost as loud as you want um go wherever you want you don't have to worry about you know if this train is leaving or if the station's closing or something like that you just fucking go <laughs> um which is nice don't get me wrong but again is it worth the costs i don't think so I mean, i'd wish that there was, you know, a proper public transportation system out here, you know. And even when I was in Kalamazoo, like, the transit system was just so fucking slow compared to Japan. You know, it would take me, like, a half hour just to get to work if I were to do it by public transport. So, versus, like, 10, 15 minutes, depending on traffic, by car. So, is that... And like I said, you know, all my clients are out in Japan, so it would make sense for me to go out there and be able to do more with them, as well as build on my network, you know, network with more people looking to, uh, to outsource their video editing, which admittedly is a pretty um, long process. And, you know, for some creators, you know, it may not be worth, worth it for them to sit down and put together videos. Because, you know, it does take a long time, and if you're not efficient with it, it can take even longer. So, to me, it would make more sense to just, especially if you're doing it consistently, you know, and you want to get the product out in time and stuff. Um, it would make sense to offload that way. You have more time to <clears throat> make, your own make, uh, make your own stuff rather than just sitting in front of your computer putting it together. <laughs> you know, you can take that time to make more stuff. Um... You can plan out more stuff. You can uh, just simply take it easy. You know, YouTube burnout is very real. And I think that outsourcing a lot of the, uh, the 
the commonly done things is going to be uh, more prevalent moving forward. Um, right now, the whole like freelance editor thing is kind of an inside game. You know, people have heard about it, but people don't really talk about it as much because it's mostly like, especially for the big channels, it's usually like one of their friends or something like that that does the editing. But I think that moving forward, there's going to be a big market for outsourcing the uh, the editing process for YouTube channels and you're already kind of seeing that uh, in the bigger cities anyway you know there's the whole Tokyo Creative um, studio out in Tokyo obviously <laughs> and they work with a lot of big names out in Japan putting together their stuff and whatnot um, or just helping them in other ways so I think there's definitely a market for it definitely very much a need for it to help out especially the big names that um, you know maybe they're just not the best editor you know maybe they're just good at being in front of the camera and talking you know it's just one of the things where you have to recognize your strengths and you know do what you can to mitigate the damage from your weaknesses so for me I know that I'm not the best in front of the camera you know, I'm very fidgety, and I don't always look at the camera. Even after all these fucking years of doing YouTube, I don't always look at the camera because I'm so, like, deep in thought, and I'm just, like, kind of my own world, just talking, you know? And, uh, again, I, I know I don't have the best camera presence, but I've gotten fairly efficient at uh, putting together videos, and especially doing it for other people has helped me improve upon that even more. So, why not just offer my skills in editing to others? You know, it just makes sense to me. And uh, I just want to be in a market where there's a lot of big players, more opportunities, and, you know, I also want to, I also want to shoot videos of my own as well, you know. Uh, just putting together um, different places that, you know, I'd go in Japan, because even though I was stationed there for over two years, there's still a lot of Japan for me to see and I saw a, a good chunk of it <clears throat> when I was out there for two years but I didn't see all of it or even close you know there's just so much to do just in Tokyo alone but I do want to see other parts of Japan as a country as well you know I want to get a bit further into it you know go to like Kyoto Osaka you know go more into southern Japan as well visit you know Fukuoka stuff like that uh, just get more of a feel for the country and just see Japan basically so um, but anyway guys I am getting hot as fuck out here so <clears throat> this is a pretty long ass update <laughs> over a half hour so thank you guys for for watching this if you made it all the way through and um, new videos and stuff like that are coming soon um, gonna be saving up to get my ass back out to Japan, uh, whether that means you know getting a new job, getting some more freelance work. Um, oh shit! One more thing I didn't talk about. I'll go over it briefly because we're already like super long in this video. But I'm also looking into going back to college here locally um, to, if anything, build up my GPA as well as help me save up money a little faster. Um, depending on how well I save up money, as far as that goes, I could be back in Japan as soon as, like, late spring, early summer-ish, or I might have to wait until the fall of 2019, next year, time's recording. Uh, it just depends on how much I can save up, you know, any kind of circumstances in between now and then that crop up. Um, stuff like that but uh, again another reason why I'm you know looking to get another job so I can work weekends and go to school and still make a good amount of money doing that freelancing and all that kind of stuff you know just gotta be on the grind baby gotta hustle so anyway with that said for real this time this is the Andy San sign for now again you guys poop for tuning into this um, Update a video and for watch other stuff. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.